The other day, I was talking to a close family member who I've been trying to persuade for a long time now to submit to Yahweh and believe in Yahshua. In our conversation, he brought up a normal rebuttal that I'm sure many of us who have been witnessing to family and friends have heard before as well. He said, I get why you're so convicted. Though he really doesn't, because if he did, he wouldn't be saying this next statement. But what about all the people in the past that thought it was the end times and that Jesus was coming back? They thought the same thing and nothing happened. So what makes you so sure? And so I had to explain to him that there was never a time before that allowed all Bible prophecy to happen. There was no time when the technology to stop everyone from buying and selling existed. There was no time when the whole world was interconnected and all signed goals to be on the same page on the same agenda. The world was never ready to accept a world religion and the majority of religions were separated. There was never a time before when all the faiths were praying together and coexisting. And then add to this that the people of the world were never so wicked. The things that the majority of people accept today would never be accepted just a generation or two in the past. And a big one, the nation of Israel was not in existence but just for 70 plus years. So there would be no way for them to co-sign their Messiah, who we know as the Antichrist. That excuse about generations believing they were in the end times and they were not is such a cop-out and very easily proven to be invalid if the person just took some time to really understand the whys. And just because people were wrong in the past doesn't invalidate the people in the present. But there are a lot of reasons why I'm sure we are in the end times and why I believe that we all must be ready for Yahshua. The thing is that people don't recognize just how much he loves us because he is consistently giving us signs and warnings, convicting urgency within those paying attention. The times are literally screaming out, repent, repent, he is on the way. But the world is distracted and not listening. So what I'm led to do is to put a lot of it together for you so that it can fully help you understand the times that we are in. And if you do understand the times that we are in, maybe you can use this to help others that you know see it as well. Because time is almost up. It's time to get focused. Let's begin. Okay, so it's understandable why people really don't get it. I mean, we are in a time where everyone can literally live their lives in their own bubble and be oblivious to what is going on around them. We are taught to only focus on what is going on in our lives and the things that we like. And so it's very easy to be distracted and ignorant to everything else going on around the world. And now is literally the worst time ever for this. This is normally the time of massive distractions, the beginning of football season and the middle of baseball season and normally, the NBA will be starting in a month or so, but we are actually in the playoffs, coming close to the NBA Finals. Yes, there is a reason for the masses to be distracted. Believe me, it's intentional. But while all these distractions are happening, the world is literally heating up to get to a rapid boil. But everyone is distracted, so no one is aware of it, and unfortunately, they won't get it until it's too late. Again, that's intentional. So what is going on, right? Well, let's first look over at the West Coast in the United States. I don't know how this could be happening and people are not convicted that something is going on. Well, maybe if you isolate it and say that that's the only event. So yeah, it's bad, but that doesn't mean too much. Maybe that's how people are justifying it. But it all needs to be looked at together. We have the wildfires on the West Coast. In recent weeks, dozens of wildfires have ignited across the state threatening to burn rural and suburban communities and blanketing cities in a smoggy haze. With fire season just still beginning, 2020 has already shattered the all-time record in California with 3.2 million acres burned so far. The historic wildfires are burning millions of acres and destroying homes in California, Oregon, and Washington. They say the fires have killed at least 33 people and dozens more are missing. The fire season usually doesn't peak until fall. This is when they say the Santa Ana and Diablo winds pick up. So this record-breaking year may still get much worse. The large fires are releasing smoke into the air, covering cities in an orange haze. Smoke so thick, it turned day into night. 11.15. 11.15 in the morning, and it's like the middle of the night almost. I mean, look at this. 
When have we ever seen anything like this? In Oregon, at least 10% of the state's population is in evacuation zones. Governor Kate Brown said that the state is preparing for a mass fatality event and expects to see high winds on Sunday that will make fighting the fires more difficult. The fires have blanketed the West Coast with smoke and have made air pollution in some cities amongst the worst in the world. Oregon Senator Jeff Merkley on Sunday told ABC News that conditions in the state were apocalyptic. Yeah, George, it is apocalyptic. Uh, it drove That's a big word to say. But if you don't live on the West Coast, it's easy for us to just look at it and feel numb. We have been seeing fires every year in California, and so the masses are becoming numb to the destruction and what's actually happening. And it's easy just to turn a blind eye to it. Like, I know it's crazy. I'm just happy I don't live there. But whether you live there or not, you should understand the implications. First off, as I see the skies red like this, I immediately think of the book of Revelation. Like in chapter 8 and verse 7 when it says, The first angel sounded, and hail and fire followed, mingled with blood, and they were thrown to the earth. And a third of the trees were burned up, and all green grass was burned. And verse 12 says, Then the fourth angel sounded, and a third of the sun was struck, a third of the moon, and a third of the stars, so that a third of them were darkened. A third of the day did not shine, and likewise the night. In the past, I used to read these verses and think to myself, wow, I really can't imagine how things would really look. But now in this present, I can see a small glimpse into the magnitude of what is to come. I feel a calling to my spirit that these are just warnings and pleas with the world that he is on the way, and that the time when he is going to test those who dwell on the earth is speeding towards us. What people are not understanding is how the enemy is using this against them. First thing that I would note is that they are gearing up to call the events of the book of Revelation climate change. As you read of what happens in the book of Revelation with the opening of the seals, the blowing of the trumpets, and the pouring of the bowls, you see massive events against the earth. The leaders of today have been showing us their hand. They will be using all of this to enforce more controls upon us and label it as their form of protection under the guise of climate change. And as these events pick up, which they will, they will call those that deny their explanations as being crazy. Wildfires are burning the suburbs in the West. Floods are wiping out suburban neighborhoods in the Midwest. Hurricanes are imperiling suburban life along our coast. If we have four more years of Trump's climate denial, how many suburbs will be burned in wildfires? How many suburban neighborhoods will have been flooded out? How many suburbs will have been blown away in superstorms? I mean, listen to the rhetoric that they are using right now. Governor of California, Gavin Newsom, said this. This is America fast forward. California, the west coast of the United States, that includes Washington and obviously Oregon, uh, are experiencing what people predicted would occur in 2040, 2050, but we're experiencing it today. Assets, But there is, there is something so fundamental that also cannot be denied, and that is climate change. The debate is over around climate change. Just come to the state of California. Observe it with your own eyes. It's not an intellectual debate. It's not even debatable any longer. Governor Inslee of the state of Washington said, that These are not just wildfires. These are climate fires. And if this, if this is not a signal to the United States, I don't know what it will take. Because we need to act, and we need to act now. And these people whose homes were, were destroyed that I've seen with their tears in the last few days, they deserve action against climate change. Also, Democratic presidential nominee Joe Biden said that the fires demonstrate that climate change poses an existential threat to our way of life. They are all together with this message. And so while we look at this and see fires, you must know you are seeing much more. As a believer first, I again see Father pleading with the world to come to him while he gives us a small preview of what is to come as his word is fulfilled. But then after that, I see the leaders of the earth conditioning the minds of today's generation, making them ignore biblical prophecy and place their scientific reasoning in place. Listen to the scientist. And so as Father judges and tests this world, you can see how people will not repent and even recognize what is actually happening because the devil has already conditioned them with another excuse. Don't believe the devil. Keep your eyes fixed upon our father. Now, like I said, 
If you just isolate the wildfires and act like nothing else is happening, then maybe I understand why people are not recognizing exactly what time it is. But let's look at what's happening in international relations, because Matthew chapter 24 says, Now as he sat on the Mount of Olives, the disciples came to him privately, saying, Tell us, when will these things be, and what will be the sign of your coming, and of the end of the age? For nation will rise against nation, and kingdom against kingdom, and there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of sorrows. That's Matthew chapter 24, verses 3 and 7 and 8. As I make these world update videos, I always like to address the rising conflict of war between nations. Because make no mistake, war is coming. I believe it will be fast, but devastating nonetheless. In the last update video, I spoke about the conflict that was brewing on the India-China border, where 20 Indian soldiers were killed in a clash with Chinese forces. It was the first deadly clash in the border area in at least 45 years, and they were then making changes to their rules of engagement. On Tuesday, September 8th, tensions along the India-China border took an alarming turn. Thank you very much for joining us. India and China are both accusing the other's soldiers of firing shots in a new confrontation along their disputed Himalayan border. China says Indian troops crossed the line of control in the western region on Monday and opened fire, and its soldiers took what it called countermeasures. But a short time ago, India's military laid the blame with China, accusing it of provocative measures to escalate tension. What is being labeled as intense firing happened between India and China as warning shots. These steps by both of the countries led to the firing of 100 to 200 shots in the air as the troops came 300 meters close to each other. Now, like I said in the last World Update video, this is something that will heat up. You have the two highest populated nuclear armed countries in the world conflicting with each other. There are a lot of reasons things could go sideways quick, but let's add to it. In the beginning of this month, a Chinese PLA, PLA is People's Liberation Army. China's army aircraft was shot down in Taiwan after intruding in the Taiwanese airspace. Some reports claim that this was an action taken by the American and Taiwanese defense system. The aircraft shot was China's Sukhoi Su-35 fighter plane. I guess not wanting to appear weak, China has been claiming that this crash took place because of a technical glitch. You should understand that there has been rising fears that a crisis over Taiwan could be a spark of military action between the United States and China. Taiwan is among one of China's most sensitive territorial issues. Beijing says it is a Chinese province, and they have denounced the Trump administration's support for the island. But China says that Taiwan is still part of China. It's a non-negotiable that Donald Trump wants to negotiate. And Washington has been eager to create a military counterbalance to Chinese forces, building on an effort known within the Pentagon as Fortress Taiwan as Beijing's military makes increasingly aggressive moves in the region. During the month of August, China announced four separate exercises along its coast, along with other exercises it said were aimed at the current security situation across the Taiwan Strait. The United States sent another warship through the Taiwan Strait in August, and they did this a few days after they conducted an exercise in the disputed South China Sea. At the end of August, China complained a U.S. spy plane had observed Chinese live fire exercises as well. A Chinese military expert, Ni Lexiong, said it was very rare and possibly the first time multiple Chinese exercises were taking place at the same time. By simultaneously conducting drills in the three seas, it means China is testing its ability to fight enemies coming from three directions at the same time. For example, from Taiwan, from Japan, and from the United States, from the South. He said, historically, frequent drills are a clear predictor of war. On Wednesday, it was reported that the United States plans to sell as many as seven major weapon systems, including mines, cruise missiles, and drones to Taiwan. It said that... It explained the latest plan is a stark contrast to the past practices of U.S. military sales to Taiwan that have been spaced out and carefully planned to minimize tensions with Beijing. The Chinese military calls the United States the biggest threat to world peace. That's a big statement. Chinese Defense Ministry spokesman Colonel Wu Qiang 
said many years of evidence shows that it is the United States that is the fomenter of regional unrest, the violator of the international order, and the destroyer of world peace. What is certain is that the ruling Communist Party has a strategic end state that it is working towards, which, if achieved, and its accompanying military modernization left unaddressed, will have serious implications for United States national interests and the security of the international rules-based order. What all this is alluding to is inevitability that war between the United States and China is coming, and the masses will be distracted from this until it starts. Do not be one of them. Relations between Beijing and Washington have hit their lowest point in decades amid simmering disputes over trade, technology, Taiwan, human rights, and the South China Sea. Does this seem to you like this will go away quietly? It shouldn't. But let's add to it. Listen to this. Fox News is learning new details about Iran allegedly mulling over an attempt to assassinate America's ambassador to South Africa, Lana Marks. The plot revealed via a key intelligence stream known as the CIA wire. Sources familiar with the report confirm the threat is credible and intelligence agencies are taking it seriously. Multiple sources say this plot is just one of several Tehran is considering to retaliate against the U.S. for the January killing of Iran's top general Qasem Soleimani during a trip to Baghdad. It clearly sounds like propaganda because no one really carries out military actions like this. But either way, this is just showing a clear example that tensions between these countries has not cooled down. Trump adds to this report by saying that the United States will respond 1,000 times greater to any attack by Iran. Then Iran warns the United States against a strategic mistake after Trump makes this threat. We hope that they do not make a new strategic mistake, and certainly in the case of any strategic mistake, they will witness Iran's decisive response, government spokesperson Ali Rabi told a televised news conference. Like I keep saying, war is coming, and everyone should be ready for it. Now, I won't talk about the economy again in this video, because I just made a video about this topic. I will only mention that the stock market is still flashing warning signals, but that's not the news. The news is that the media is starting to report on it. All of this news happening in the beginning of the month. Forbes, stock market crash, warning signs are flashing. CNN, the stock market is flashing a warning sign. Business Insider, Goldman Sachs says Wall Street's fear gauge is flashing a warning sign unseen since the dot-com crash in 2000. There is an economic problem approaching as well, and I stress this. When the crash happens, it will affect everyone, not just the United States, though the United States will be hit the hardest of the developed nations. There's been so much escalation of news that has happened in the first two weeks of this month. Along with the stock market warning signs, another point to the rising conflict between China and the United States is being reported that China may dump United States treasuries as China-US tensions flare. It said that China will gradually decrease its holding of United States debt to about $800 billion under normal circumstances. But of course, China might sell all of its U.S. bonds in an extreme case, like a military conflict. That would be a major move against the dollar, which again, basically allows us to see how fast things could transpire if things escalate. And they are still reporting about the takedown of the dollar as we see a report this week from Bloomberg that according to Ray Dalio, founder of hedge fund giant Bridgewater Associates, the dollar's decade-long position as a global reserve currency is in jeopardy because of steps that the United States has taken to support its economy during the COVID-19 pandemic. If you have been following this channel way before COVID, you would understand that they are just using COVID as a scapegoat. But either way, they are predicting horrific news. So while everyone is distracted by sports and Instagram, the world chess pieces are positioned for conflict. It is very unwise to let it catch you off guard. Now, with all of that brewing, one thing that should always be at the back of everyone's mind is that we are in an election year. And for the first time, this election is centered around complete uncertainty. I have been saying this for a while, but I do not expect there to be finality during this election, if we even have the election. Anyone that wants to talk to me about 2021, I tell them, let's talk after the election. I am preparing for uncertainty and whatever comes along with the contested election. 
Yahoo is even reporting that the FBI is warning police nationwide to expect an increase in election related threats and potentially violent attacks from domestic extremists. Domestic violent extremists across the ideological spectrum likely will continue to plot against government and election related targets to express their diverse grievances involving government policies and actions. The FBI says in a recent election focused bulletin sent to law enforcement across the country. It seems that no matter who declares a winner, the other side will contest it. The mail-in voting that they are promoting already seems like there will be massive uncertainty surrounding it. I mean, they are already starting the stories. Donald Trump has already declared the 2020 election the most rigged in American history. Joe Biden has warned that Trump might not even leave the White House willingly. And Trump hasn't confirmed he would accept unfavorable election results should he lose. The media is even reporting that it's easy to imagine a scenario where no winner is known for days, weeks, or longer following the November 3rd election. Trump has even said this himself. We are going to have an election that takes place on a beautiful day, November 3rd. And usually at the end of the evening, they say, Donald Trump has won the election. Donald Trump is your new president. Whatever they say, you know what? You're not going to know this possibly, if you really did it right, for months or for years. Because these ballots are all going to be lost. They're going to be gone. It is beyond me how people are just ignoring all of this and just waiting for normalcy to enter in. We are on the cusp of major change. The only thing that makes sense is expecting change. Ignoring it is definitely not the answer. Look at all that I have described, and I really had to keep it light because of time's sake. But if you still do not believe it's the end times, look what is happening in the Middle East. They are calling it the Abraham Accord. Israel on Tuesday signed historic diplomatic pacts with two Gulf Arab states at a White House ceremony that President Donald Trump declared will mark the dawn of a new Middle East. The bilateral agreements formalized the normalization of Israel's already thawing relations with the United Arab Emirates and Bahrain in line with the common opposition to Iran. Now, there is a lot going on with this. Let me just give some details on what is actually happening. There's a lot of noise surrounding this event. People praising Trump and Israel and the leaders of UAE and Bahrain. But this is just a stepping stone and distraction. This treaty is just a setting of conditions. In order to gain a peace treaty with the UAE, Israel had to do two things. First, they have to give up any and all aspirations of annexing anything until at least 2024. Secondly, Israel must agree to work to create a Palestinian state from within the borders inside, outside, and around the nation of Israel as it currently stands. The agreements do not address the decades-long conflict between Israel and the Palestinians. This is not about bringing peace to the Middle East. In fact, the Palestinians, who are not a part of this agreement, view the pact as a stab in the back from their fellow Arabs and a betrayal of their cause for a Palestinian state. It's more likely to bring about more conflict that will deliver the chaos needed in order to bring about the peace the Antichrist will bring. This agreement sounds complex because it's a bunch of hoopla. I don't care about it, and I'm not focusing on it. I view it as a distraction. Trump and Jared Kushner are not the Antichrist. Neither of them is filling those roles. Kushner is just a distraction, and they placed him in that role to be just that. I know many people that believe him to be the Antichrist, but I do not believe it at all. Not even close. I believe all of this may be just the foundations laid out in which the son of perdition, when he takes power, will add to or use. It is nothing that should be looked at as fulfillment of Bible prophecy. But it is confirmation that they are trying to bring about this prophecy trying to bring about peace and safety. That's why it's no coincidence that the deal to normalize relations between the state of Israel and the United Arab Emirates is called the Abraham Accord. This is more of a goal of merging the world religions and bringing the one world religion together. They are using it to say that after thousands of years, Jews and Muslims will no longer see each other as opponents, rivals, or enemies, but as long lost cousins who come together in fraternal embrace in the place made famous by their mutual ancestor. But this whole situation is filled with more lies than truth. But the lost world will not see it this way. What you are witnessing is the rise of the one world religion. They do not hide it. If you go to the White House website, whitehouse.gov, 
they have a peace to prosperity plan, a vision to improve the lives of the Palestinian and Israeli people. This was drafted in January of this year, 2020. On page 20 of the 181 page report, it says, Jerusalem's holy sites should remain open and available for peaceful worshipers and tourists of all faiths. People of every faith should be permitted to pray on the Temple Mount, Haram al-Sharif, in a manner that is fully respectful to their religion, taking into account the times of each religion's prayers and holidays, as well as other religious factors. Seems very clear. When you are seeing these accords being implemented, you are just seeing the rise of the one world religion. For those that are just ignoring the times that we are in and acting like this is not about the end times and the coming worship of the Antichrist, I really suggest you begin to go back and study Bible prophecy because these things are happening right under our noses. The framework is being built. Trump and Kushner will not be the men to bring this about, but they're laying the foundation and the Antichrist will find victory where these men did not. On top of all this, my brother in the faith sent me reports about what they're saying in Israel at this time. Don't ever forget that this Sabbath starts what they call Rosh Hashanah, what we call the Feast of Trumpets, spoken of in Leviticus chapter 23, verses 23 through 25. This is actually the seventh month on the biblical calendar, though the Jews, Rev 2 nines, today call it their new year. That is too much to discuss, though. It's what they are saying right now that is important. Listen to these Rev 2 nines. I'm going to tell you with certainty. Hashem will help us. We'll meet together after Rosh Hashanah. And remember what I'm telling you. This Rosh Hashanah is the last one without Mashiach. And it's very possible that already on this Rosh Hashanah, Mashiach is going to reveal himself. And those who know me, for more than 40 years I've been giving Shurim. How many years have you heard me over now? For 10 years. Have I ever spoken about Mashiach? This rabbi, Rabbi Shalom Arush, made what they call an entirely uncharacteristic announcement. He said, on September 18th, Jews will be celebrating the last new year without the Messiah. He is making a claim with certainty that their Messiah will be revealed after this Rosh Hashanah. And next year, this time, he will be amongst them. They are claiming their Messiah is on the way, which as a believer on the opposite side who knows the Messiah has already come, we know this figure to come is the Antichrist. To hear these people speak in such certainty that their Messiah is coming, while you see all these other events that are brewing and transpiring, it's alarming. And I believe that it should bring a sense of urgency to the world of repentance and submission to the Most High before you submit to the beast and bear his mark. So with all that I've shared in this video, let's go back to how I started it. Again, there's a lot of reasons why I'm sure we are in the end times and why I believe that we all must be ready for Yahshua. The thing is that people don't recognize just how much he loves us because he is consistently giving us signs and warnings, convicting urgency within those paying attention. These times today are literally screaming out, repent, repent, he is on the way. But the world is distracted. By now, at the end of this video, I hope you clearly see what they are being distracted from. And believe me, there's a lot more. With all that I showed, and more, it is clear of the obvious direction this world is collectively headed in. If you do not want to go along for the ride and be part of the deception, you must know that our only option is Yahshua the Messiah. He is our only hope. Do not be steered by this world. Be very careful with what you are paying attention to. Stay focused on your relationship with the Most High. Tend to your soul and do not get swayed away with the cares of this world, because everything seems to be moving strategically towards this new world order. And the matters that they are placing for you to pay attention to are only there to distract you and get you bogged down in their agenda. If you're not living with an understanding and expectation of trouble ahead, you run a very big risk of falling victim to the traps of the enemy that will have you die in your sins or accept the mark of the beast, worshiping the Antichrist. You need to get smart and kingdom focused. Focus on the things above and not of this world. For our citizenship is in heaven, from which we also eagerly wait for the Savior, the Master, Yahshua the Messiah. 
who will transform our lowly body that it may be conformed to his glorious body according to the working by which he is able even to subdue all things to himself. Philippians chapter 3 verses 20 through 21. We are being prepared for him and he is graciously giving us warnings and signs showing us without a shadow of a doubt that his coming is upon us. It's time that you get serious and live in reality. Live for our Father in heaven. Do not let football and basketball distract you. Do not let false politics distract you. Do not let these racial social movements distract you. Do not let money or selfish goals distract you. Yes, you are in this world, but you are not of it. Continue to walk and grow your relationship with our master and king and continue to reject the enemy. Be smart. Be faithful. Be convicted. Be courageous. Be a believer. Your time is almost up. Be blessed. Okay, thanks again for watching. If this has blessed you, please don't forget to like it and share it with others. If you haven't done so already, please don't forget to subscribe to this channel. Elohim willing, I upload every Friday. Don't forget to follow this ministry on Facebook and Instagram, as well as on my website, truthunedited.com. I'm thankful for all of you. Thank you especially to those Elohim has placed it on your hearts to give and you have done so. This ministry is not easy and your donations truly help. There is no team other than my wife and I. Your blessings truly support this ministry. Thank you for your obedience and your blessings. I thank all of you for the support. Okay, thanks again for watching. I love you all.